I'm Tandy Gutierrez and this is a Mountain Kitchen mini vid. So I use these little short mini vids as tutorials, right? Like the kind of information you get in a private class or if you have a specific injury or issue that you need help with, okay? So this is what I call the best hamstring stretch ever, okay? And so people come to me for years now and go, I do hamstring stretches all the time and my mobility and flexibility never increase, okay? So yes, there's a lot of variations on that, right? Do you sit at a desk all day? Do you drive all day? What are the other you know, pieces of your life that you're doing aside from like this two minute stretch where you're trying to open things? That's number one. So how much balance do you have to get to get things to open up and even out? What are the lifestyle components of it? Because everything rolls into your results, right? So how's your hydration? Do you ever do an Epsom salt bath for muscle recovery? Like, are you tending to yourself? Do you do some myofascial release and foam rolling? All these would be great things and all things that you learn at mountainkitchen.com with me. But the biggest piece of hamstring mobility, length, and getting more flexibility, aside from just genetics, right, is the alignment and a proper hamstring stretch. Most people are doing them in terrible alignment, terrible form, and so it's a wasted effort, unfortunately. So yeah, you probably have been doing hamstring stretches for most of your life and getting nowhere with them. So the best hamstring stretch ever, this little series and variation, has a super high success rate <laughs> in the last 20 years with my clients um, of really gaining some mobility and some space in your hamstrings and your low back, okay? So it's going to hit more than just your hamstrings, but it's all going to feed into the same thing. This is also an amazingly excellent um, stretch for plantar fasciitis. So it's really the best way to go about it. Again, personally with my clients over the last 20 years and the M&K subscribers, a huge success rate of really alleviating plantar fasciitis or even, you know, goes away. But you do have to be diligent with it. So if you have plantar fasciitis and you're looking at this video because of that, then you want to be doing this stretch a minimum of two to four times a week consistently for four weeks before you can really see any improvement in it, okay? So here we go. The best hamstring stretch ever. You're gonna lay on your mat, you've got a yoga strap. You're gonna take it across the ball of the foot and this is probably the most important piece of it. Extend that other leg out long and then just reach that leg out, okay? So know that in a hamstring stretch, it doesn't mean that it's good simply because it's close to you. You're gonna push through the heels and pull through the toes and do your very best to use your yoga strap to drive the ball of the baby toe level with each other. That's number one. Then you can bring it in, right, a little bit closer to you. But as you do that, take your hip, that booty cheek, whatever foot that's in the yoga strap, and reach it down. Second biggest piece of this. So you want the yoga strap around the ball of the foot. That's one of the magic steps. The next magic piece is reaching down through that sits bone to level off your hips, your pelvis. So your, the origin of your hamstrings is in your sits bones, right? It's the only bones in your butt. If that alignment is off and wonky and you're trying to get a hamstring stretch, hamstring length is not going to change. They need to be in their proper place. So reach that booty cheek down, tuck it underneath you. It will feel crooked, but you can check those hips. It's not. Leave the hips there, keep reaching through the sits bones, push through the heel to lengthen through the back of the leg. Imagine reaching out the back of the knee crease and pulling on the strap at the same time. Then, with integrity, then start to pull that leg in towards you, but keep reaching down through that sits bone. That's the big deal. Like, I can get that leg to touch my nose, except then my hips up in my ear. That's not gonna help my hamstring. Reach through the back of the knee crease. So the insertion point of your hamstring is behind the knee crease. You have to work with origin and insertion to get length. Be respectful of how the muscles, ligaments, and tendons work, and you'll be super rewarded, okay? So alignment matters, form matters. And if you give it the attention and you've got quality over quantity, you'll start to really get results in things. From here, take an inhale, exhale, just take the foot gently across to the opposite shoulder. It's not going very far. Notice that both of my hip bones are still on the mat. I'm still reaching 
down with that sits bone and it feels crooked, okay? And you'll know because the whole side of your leg will light up and you'll go, hello IT band, how nice to see you, right? Then you're going to take both of the straps into the other hand and slowly lower it all the way for the rotation, okay? The rule on this one is, is that this opposite shoulder needs to stay connected to the floor, to the mat, and that leg can end up wherever it'll go. Tuck your tailbone under, lift through the belly. Scoop the belly button up underneath the rib cage. Hold it there high and tight. The hand's trying to be in line with your shoulder, okay, and you're looking away from the leg. If that goes to the ground, fine. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Three, two, one. Then take the leg up, switch which hand it's in, and then open it up. Now, it's going to hit more of the inner thigh, right? And the rule on this one is, is that the opposite sits bone, hip, and booty cheek has to stay connected to the floor as this one opens, okay? If it rolls off, it's no good. You're not getting the alignment, so you won't get the mobility. Three, two, one, and then bring it to center. Switch legs, okay? So this first portion is the best hamstring stretch ever, the straight-on parallel alignment. The other leg reaches out. If it doesn't go to straight, that's fine, okay? Roll the shoulders down and back. Take the yoga strap across the ball of the foot, not the arch, super important. Press through the heel, pull through the toes, and then do your very best to reach down in that sits bone. See if you can level off the big toe and the baby toe. That may be something that can happen. It may not be, okay? So you always want to meet yourself on the mat. You want to balance as much as possible, right? But not push or force anything, but just have awareness to it. Reach through that sits bone, push through the ball of the big toe, pull. So remember, it's not about how close the leg gets, it's how properly aligned is it. Reach down through that booty cheek and sits bone. That's the most important part. That and the yoga strap going across the ball of the foot. How close it comes right now is not important in the least. Squeeze down in the armpit, keep your shoulders away from the ears, press through the back of the knee crease. So rather than feeling like you're pushing, shoving from the quad to lengthen the leg, you're going to reach through the back of the knee crease to get that opening. Does that mean it's going to straighten? No. But if it's coming from the right alignment and the right place, you have a higher chance at it. And if you keep working in the proper alignment and the proper place long term, you've really got a chance at increasing your mobility. Okay? Stay here. Keep pressing through that sits bone. Keep pulling up and in on the abdominals. Push through the heel. Pull through the toes. Do your best to level it off. If it comes in closer, great doesn't matter. Keep the chest open, okay? Then switch both pieces of the yoga strap into one hand. Take it to the opposite shoulder, just tiny, trying to square off the big toe and the baby toe, perhaps to the ceiling. That's a lot to ask, okay? And it only goes to that opposite shoulder. It's not very far. Four, three, two, one. And then keep it in that same hand. And the opposite arm reaches out and open, and the shoulder's trying to stay connected to the floor. Push through the heel, reach through the back of both knee creases, and then pull through the ball of the foot. If it gets to the floor, fine, but the opposite back of the shoulder has to stay connected to the floor. Four, three, two, one. Lift up, switch hands, okay? reach open. So this hip and booty cheek has to stay connected to the floor and to the mat as this one opens. If it rolls, it's no good. Okay. Four, three, two, and one. Bring it in. Carefully release. Rock on up to seated position. Okay. So that's the best hamstring stretch ever. Um, and again, if you want to see some major improvements in things, you're going to do that two to four times a week. It can be a warm-up to anything that you do. It can be a pre-bedtime ritual. You know, it's all about getting these pieces integrated into your life. If you're a runner, 
you should be doing this before and after your runs, right? Just out of kindness to your body to give yourself length and to give yourself space in the joints and to keep the mobility supple and smooth. So thank you for joining me for the best hamstring stretch ever, and I'll see you next time.